Welcome to this course, Theory of Yarn Structure. In the last time, we started module 5, Mass Irregularity of Yarns. So, in that lecture, we talked about Martindale's model. Martindale's model was based on four assumptions. So, Martindale considers a sliver which was prepared from many fibers, all fibers were straight parallel to sliver axis, all fibers had same length, the fibers deposited individually and randomly to create the sliver and the number of fibers present in the cross section of the sliver follows Poisson distribution. Under these four assumptions, we derived a relationship of sliver fineness, which was equal to mean fiber fineness by mean sliver fineness into square of CV of fiber fineness. plus 1. So, this derivation we completed in our last lecture. Also, we established a relation between C V of fiber fineness and C V of fiber diameter, which is often valid in case of wool fiber. So, in that case the relation was C V of fiber fineness was equal to 2 times C V of fiber diameter. Then if we substitute, then we obtained plus 1. So, often you will see in many articles and also books, this expression you used for to find out the find the C V of sliver prepared from wool fibers. So, in this lecture, we will first discuss about the effect of doubling on mass irregularity. So, <coughs> what is the effect of doubling? on mass irregularity of sliver. Almost all of us knows about doubling. Doubling is basically <coughs> combination of slivers. So, when we combine or when we put one sliver beside another sliver, we call doubling is equal to 2. When we place three slivers side by side, we say doubling is equal to 3. So, doubling basically refers to combination of slivers. Now, often we see in draw frame in a roller drawing machine, we feed 6 to 8 slivers that is doubling is equal to 6 to 8 and we obtain a drawn sliver. Why do we do that? In a simpler form to say doubling reduces mass irregularity of sliver. how it is done. So, in this lecture we are going to learn about that. So, what is the theoretical basis that doubling reduces mass irregularity of sliver? That is what we would like to learn today. So, 
what we see here is m number of slivers. This is sliver number 1, sliver number 2 and likewise till mth sliver. This sliver fineness is denoted by T subscript 1 of course, T 1 is a random variable. Second sliver the sliver fineness T subscript 2 is also another random variable. Mth sliver fineness T subscript M which is another random variable. Now, each sliver is different. They are different in terms of fibers, fiber parameters, they are different in terms of fineness, they are different in terms of their irregularity. Sliver 1 has a mean fiber fineness T 1 bar, coefficient of variation of fiber fineness V T 1, mean sliver fineness capital T 1 bar and coefficient of variation of sliver fineness V T 1. V T 1 can be obtained by using Martindale's model. V T 1 is equal to T 1 bar by this V square T 1 plus 1 right. Now, we come to second sliver. The mean fiber fineness T 2 bar, C V of fiber fineness V T 2, mean sliver fineness capital T 2 bar and C V of sliver fineness V T 2. This expression also can be obtained similarly by using Martindale's model. Now, we come to mth sliver mean fiber fineness small t subscript m bar C v of fiber fineness v t subscript m mean sliver fineness capital T subscript m bar and C v of sliver fineness v capital T subscript m. This can also be found out by using Martinez model in a similar manner. right. Now, so if we double then we will obtain one sliver that is called double sliver. Okay. So, let us first characterize these individual slivers. So, we can now consider one particular sliver say j th sliver so what will be the mean value mean sliver fineness is this and the C V will be
this. So, these are the and also the variance will be is equal to this right because c v square is equal to variance by mean square. So, variance equal to c v square into mean square. Okay. Now, what about the doubled sliver? For the doubled sliver, So, if we combine all these individual slivers, we will form a double sliver. That double sliver will also have a mean of sliver fineness. That mean T bar will be equal to summation of all means right and it will also have a variance d t these variances will be all additive also it will have a coefficient of variation this. So, left hand side are the characteristics of individual slivers, right hand side are the characteristics of double sliver. We need to find out the expression for C v of fineness of double sliver. So, T bar is equal to this j is equal to 1 to m okay. and d t is equal to summation d t j all variances are additive in nature. Now, v square t j into t j bar square, we will substitute this from Martin Dell's model. right sorry this one will cancel so the final expression for variance is this into this okay so, if this is the expression for variance of the double sliver, then the C V of fineness of double sliver will be V T is equal to D T by 
t bar or we can square it d t by t bar square right. So, we can write summation j is equal to 1 j is equal to m t j this v square t j plus 1 divided by t bar square. And if we take the root, then Also, we can write this expression in this manner. and j is equal to 1 to m right. So, this is the most general expression for the C V of fineness of double sliver. Summation this is the fineness of individual I fineness of jet sliver fiber fineness of jet sliver this is the mean fineness of the double sliver this is the fineness of jet sliver this is the mean fineness of double sliver this is the square of cv of fiber fineness of jet sliver plus 1 now <coughs> look at this fraction mean fineness of j sliver divided by mean fineness of double sliver. So, this is the mass fraction of j sliver. So, this is the mass fraction of j sliver right. So, this is the most general expression. Now, we will consider a very special case. Let us assume that all fibers are same that means t1 bar is equal to t2 bar is equal to t bar then their cv will also be same So, they become constant right.
also we consider that the fineness of all slivers are same. That means, T 1 bar, T 2 bar m bar which is equal to capital T bar by m right why because capital T bar was this Okay. Then, what we obtain is, let us rewrite Here we will write T bar by M. So, this is your T bar, this is your this, this is T bar by M and T bar is there already. Okay. Uh, we can write this as so one by M T bar by this V square T plus one. Okay. So, further we can write it as V T is equal to one by M T bar by this into P square T plus 1. So, this becomes a constant. So, so we can write V T double sliver is the C V of individual sliver by root over m right so you have often seen this expression cv of double sliver is equal to cv of individual sliver divided by number of doubling so this expression is a very special case not true always it holds true only in one case 
when all fibers are same, they are mean fineness same, CV coefficient of variation of fiber fineness same and also all individual slivers have same mean fineness. Then only this expression is true. Otherwise, if all individual slivers are very different, then you will find out the C V of double sliver by using the most general form that we derived few minutes before. Right. So, this was about effect of doubling on mass irregularity. Now, we will consider a very interesting situation. Suppose, fibers are not parallel to the axis of the sliver. Suppose, the fly fibers are inclined at an angle from the axis of the sliver, what will be about the irregularity of that sliver? Why we think about this? It is a very special abstract case. We would like to learn the effect of fiber inclination on mass irregularity of sliver. So, what is the effect of fiber inclination on the mass irregularity of sliver? This we would like to learn now. Effect of fiber inclination on the mass irregularity of sliver. Suppose, let me draw two slivers. This is one. Second is this, this is the axis and here also this is the axis. This is suppose sliver A, this is suppose sliver B. Which of these two slivers will have higher mass irregularity? and why. So, this is our basic question. What do you think so? Sliver A will have higher mass irregularity than sliver B or the mass irregularity of sliver B is higher than that of sliver A. So, let us solve this abstract case. Now, So, what you see is that this is a diagram of a sliver with oblique fibers. 
So, all fibers are inclined at an angle theta from the axis of sliver. In that case, what will be the C V of fineness of this sliver? Now, in order to solve this problem, let us imagine a simple situation. What do you see here? A fiber of length L, which is also inclined at an angle theta from the axis. What do we do? The cross sectional area of this fiber is S, but the sectional area perpendicular to the axis of this fiber is S star. obviously, S star is greater than S. Now, what do we do? Imaginatively, we divide this L into many segments, many infinitesimally small segments. Then, we drop each segment along the axis of the sliver. So, we obtain a fiber what we call as obvious and imaginary fiber. So, this is called as effective fiber. As a result, we obtain an effective fiber of course, this is imaginative. This fiber will have a length L star. So, the inclined fiber has a length L and this effective fiber has a length L star. What is the relation between L star and L? into cos theta right. This oblique fiber has a cross sectional area S, this effective fiber has a sectional area S star. We refer to our module 1, where we defined and derived this relation. What is the relation between cross sectional area of a fiber and sectional area of a fiber which is inclined at an angle theta? So, this relationship we derived in module 1. Then what is the fineness of this effective fiber T star? We know from again module 1. This is the expression for fineness. S by cos theta into rho. So, S into rho by cos theta. What is S into rho? S into rho is T. T is the fineness of oblique fiber at cos theta. Right. So, fineness of the effective fiber or imaginative fiber is equal to the fineness of oblique fiber divided by cos of the angle of inclination. When theta is equal to 0, cos theta is equal to 1, t star is equal to t. When theta is greater than 0, then cos theta is less than 1, so t star is greater than t. So, the effective fiber will be coarser than the oblique fiber 
when they are inclined at an angle theta. What will be the mean? This mean will be cos theta is a constant and expectation of t will be t bar right. So, t bar by cos theta this is the mean what will be the variance 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 of this is this is the definition of variance. T star, T star is T by cos theta, expectation of T star that is T star bar, T star bar is by cos theta square. Now, cos theta is a constant, So, the constant will come this. So, what is this? This is the variance of T. T, right? then what will be the C v of T star? So, coefficient of variation that is equal to this. What is this? this is variance of this divided by mean of this variance we have just now de derived 1 by cos square theta into variance of t mean of t star mean of t by cos theta. So, this cos theta will cancel out as a result what is left is variance of t by mean of t that is equal to coefficient of variation of t. So, this is a very interesting result what we see is that whether a fiber is inclined it does not matter so far C v of fiber fineness is concerned. So, C v of an inclined fiber and C v of fineness of an inclined fiber and C v of fineness of a straight fiber is same that is what we obtain from here right. This we substitute in original Martindale's equation. 
so v t is equal to t star this into v square t star plus 1 this will be the C V of fineness of sliver with inclined fibers. Now, we substitute cos theta t bar this does not change this. So, what we see is that one right. So, what we see is that because of the inclination the slifer the C V of sliver fineness is higher. So, if theta increases V T increases higher is the inclination of fibers higher is the mass irregularity of the slifer. So, if we come back to our starting question which of these slivers will have higher mass irregularity of course, sliver B is the answer and why this complete derivation answers this question why. Right? Further what we see is that when theta tends to pi by 2 that means, fibers are perpendicular to the axis of the sliver. Right. In that case cos theta theta tends to pi by 2 this tends to 0 this is very small when this is very small this fraction is very very high. So, V t tends to infinity. So, the mass irregularity of the sliver theoretically tends to infinity when the angle of inclination tends to pi by 2. So, when all the fibers are parallel to the axis of the sliver, the sliver will exhibit enormously high mass C V. So, this very interesting however, abstract situation gives us some interesting information. Now, we will discuss a few important attributes of mass irregularity of sliver. The first of it is limit irregularity. There exists a concept of limit irregularity. This limit irregularity 
is often expressed by I is defined by actual experimental mass C V divided by limit C V that means C V actual by C V limit. Now, there is a testing instrument so called Ooster tester, Ooster evenness tester which measures the mass irregularity of sliver, roving, yarn and it actually measures. So, we obtain actual C V from experiments. C V limit we can calculate using Martindale's model. This C V limit and if we divide C V actual by C V limit we obtain limit irregularity. So, it is not limit irregularity it is index of irregularity I am sorry. this is index of irregularity. So, index of irregularity i is defined by actual C V by limit C V. Ooster tester measures actual C V, limit C V can be obtained from Martindale's equation. If we divide then we obtain index of irregularity. What we observed is that index of irregularity i is too high sometimes for yarn this index of irregularity found to be this range. what infers is if we consider index of irregularity is say 2.58 which is often found then actual C V is 2.5 times higher than limit C V. This clearly indicates that Martindale's model is not too precise. Had it been precise, the index of irregularity would have come close to 1, but it is 2.58 times higher, actual C V is 2.58 times higher than limit C V. That means, there is something imprecise in Martindale's model. There exist a few corrections in literature. One of the corrections empirical has been given by the company Ooster. Ooster. They have given this correction as C V limit is equal to this A and B are parameters. So, this empirical correction was suggested by 
the company Worcester. If we write this, so V T is equal to A by B. Okay. Then what happens is that if we take logarithm both side right. So, if we plot this along y axis, this along x axis, we obtain a linear curve this so called Worcester statistics. How does this curve looks like? This curve looks like this Worcester statistics. So, V t is equal to A minus B ln T bar. <coughs> this is y, this is x, we obtain a linear. So, if t, t bar is takes so starts from here to here, so from here to here and if you look from this side to this side it is basically any and 5 percent of the textile companies considered by Worcester shows this trend. 25 percent of the companies in the world surveyed by Worcester shows this trend. 50 percent of the companies worldwide surveyed by Worcester shows this trend. 75 percent of the companies surveyed by Worcester shows this trend and 95 percent of the companies worldwide surveyed by Worcester shows this trend. So, this is the this is how you should read Worcester statistics curves. So, this is linear because of this function. So, this is one of the empirical corrections of Martindale's model. However, this is completely empirical, it does not give any insight of what is not too correct in Martindale's model. Probably a better formulation was given by Bonnet Bonnet idea was also empirical, however, he tried to analyze Martindale's assumptions little deeply. What he thought is that Martindale's model had four assumptions, fibers have same length, it is acceptable all fibers are parallel and incline are and parallel and to sliver axis and they are straight also 
to some extent acceptable. Fiber numbers in the cross section follows Poissonian distribution is ok. Fibers deposit individually to form a sliver. This assumption was questioned by Bonnet. What Bonnet thought that when fibers in a drafting system, when fibers move, they move together in clusters. So, some fibers agglomerate, they form a cluster, that cluster moves to form a sliver. So, that's, that was Bonnet's idea. So, what you see in this image is it is a Martindale's model, one fiber and then sliver. Here it is cluster and then sliver. So, he probably, Bonnet probably thought this is not correct. However, this is correct that is what Bonnet thought. Then he empirically suggested one relation. This is the mean fineness of cluster by mean fineness of fiber 1 by 4 mean fineness of sliver fineness of fiber to the power 1 by 3. This relation was empirical. So, he proposed this relation. This is the mean fineness of cluster, mean fineness of fiber, mean fineness of sliver, mean fineness of fiber. Then we can write by bar is equal to T c by T bar into T bar by this. This is equal to 1 by 4 T bar by this to the power 1 by 3 T bar by this show 1 by 4 2 by 3. Then we can write irregularity of this sliver will be this divided by 2. What will in Martinian's ex expression if you substitute this if you substitute small t bar by capital T bar by this then you will get this form. So, in Martindale's model small t bar by capital T bar, this expression you substitute by this form, then you will obtain this expression. And this value is numerically higher than that obtained from Martindale. So, this empirical correction he suggested. So, these two empirical corrections are existing 
in textile literature. However, Bournet's idea or this expression has a serious problem. If I try to obtain this graph, say this value is 64, then what will obtain this value will be equal to 1. If this is less than 64, then this is not possible because this will be imaginary part. The fineness of cluster cannot be less than the fineness of fiber. However, this is the real part. So, if one has to use this expression, you need to be sure that the cross section of the fiber, the cross section of in the cross section of sliver or yarn number of fiber must be greater than 64, then only you should be able to use this expression. If a yarn is having less than 64 numbers in the cross section, then this expression cannot be used, because this expression has a serious problem. It can it does not define when number of fibers is less than 64. If it is more than 64, you can use this expression. So, we stop here in the next class we will further discuss about mass irregularity of sliver. Thank you, thank you very much for your attention.